Hey there everyone, welcome back to the channel for another Chem Complete lecture on aldehydes and ketones. And in today's lecture, we are going to take a look at what happens if we start using the functional group amines and exposing them to aldehydes and ketones. And the result is what's called an imine formation. So that is the new reaction that we will be taking a look at with aldehydes and ketones today. And that's coming up on the channel right now. All right, so what we want to take a look at here is for imine formation, we're going to use an aldehyde or a ketone, and we are going to have it react with a primary amine. And primary amines are the key here, because you can get a separate type of reaction if you use a secondary amine, and that is called an inamine formation. And we will take a look at that. That will actually be the next lecture that we do on this channel. So let's start with a ketone. These conditions are reversible, similar to the cyanohydrin addition. And if we take a look at this, we're going to have some sort of a basic amine that is primary. So for this particular example, I'm just going to go ahead and do CH3, CH2, and H2. So ethyl amine. Okay, now what we want here are acidic conditions and you have to be careful with this because the amine is a base and so if you're reacting it in the same environment as an acid you can get cross reactivity over here now amines are a relatively they're a good base generally speaking but they're a relatively mild base compared to some other things that we've seen like a hydride in the previous reactions Okay, so what's very important here is that you want to keep your pH somewhere between 4 to 5 in order to make sure that it's not so acidic that you end up protonating or ruining this amine. Because if the pH drops too much below 4, right, let's say that we've got, for instance, a pH equal to 1, well, in a case like that, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. So you're going to have the ethyl group and then this amine will send its lone pair out to grab an extra hydrogen so you'd get nh3 plus and that renders this useless as a nucleophile this is not going to have any nucleophile type of behavior or activity okay but then you're going to see as we go along through this mechanism there's a point where the acid is needed it's not there for no reason and when we get to that point, we have to make sure that there's enough acid, not so much that it ruins the nucleophilicity of the amine, but also we need to make sure that we have enough present that the reaction can finish itself, that it can get a hold of some protons in solution. So we want to avoid a pH that goes much above, right, 5, maybe 6. You start getting too far out there, you're going to have another problem. So how does this initiate? Well, what ends up happening is that the amine can come in and it can attack okay so you can have the amine come in and attack like this and of course that's going to also open up the carbonyl in that process okay, now when this happens you're going to end up with the amine attached to the carbon in the carbonyl group. However, there's something that's going to rapidly occur here, which is a proton transfer to the oxygen. Okay, So this amine, and I'm going to draw it over here for the sake of just showing the proton transfer with the oxygen. This amine that came in, you've got a nitrogen, it would have hydrogen, it would have another hydrogen, because it was an NH2, it was a primary amine, and it would have CH2, CH3, okay? And this would technically be O minus. Well, when you've got something like this, this is O minus, this would be N plus. This N plus is looking to get rid of that proton and the O minus is looking to pick it up. And so there is going to be a proton transfer internally, not externally, meaning not this proton up here. We're not ready for that yet but internally 
it's going to rearrange itself so that you get the alcohol and the amine as the intermediate. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to draw that or write that over here. Okay, and what we can just write here is that we're going to have H plus transfer. Right, and so the H plus transfer is simply going to rearrange this so that what I end up with is something more along the lines of this, where I've got the alcohol at the top now. And that's important because that alcohol is going to protonate itself with the acid uh, that we were talking about up here to become water, and then water can become a sufficient leaving group. Okay, So now we've got this here. Okay? So you may have seen a lot of uh, professors or teachers that kind of just jump straight to this structure that I'm showing you right now, and you might be confused as to how they got this from that step. This is, and I usually make my students write it out explicitly so that I'm aware they know that it happened. This is the proton transfer step internally. It just makes sense for it to rearrange itself, mechanistically speaking. Okay, so now we're at this intermediate here, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do another type of a reaction with this intermediate because this is a somewhat stable intermediate here we don't have any type of formal charges carbocations anything like that okay but it turns out that in the presence of the hydrogen now we're talking about the h plus right that is in the solution so this ph4 to ph5 range this oxygen will now readily come over pick up the hydrogen Okay, and when it does so, it's going to come to another step where we would have water. Now, water is a very good leaving group. So water would not stick around very long. And what we're going to have is the next rearrangement of the molecule. CH2, CH3. Now... The water is going to leave, and when the water leaves, it would leave behind a carbocation, but we have this nitrogen that has a lone pair and could donate in order to avoid the carbocation issue. Okay, so what that results in would then be the following. So you can see we're starting to get a lot of steps in these mechanisms here as we're looking at some of the intermediate aldehyde and ketone reactions. So now the water is gone. At this point, I'm going to draw up here. There's a double bonded nitrogen instead of oxygen, right? And this has a hydrogen. And it also has the ethyl group. Right? So, and I still have my other methyl down here. Now, this would be this form. So the nitrogen would have the positive charge. And then you would have or finish this up with H2O. Okay, And where is the H2O coming from? It's implied that if you're going to have acidic solution, right, you're going to have the amine, which is polar. It's going to want another polar solvent. So we would go ahead and we'd use water. The water, in this case, it will come in. It will grab hydrogen and then this can go back to the nitrogen right so that it gets a lone pair so all of that would lead to running out of room here this product okay and the product would be let's see if I can fit it in here CH3 C double bond N CH2 CH3 lone pair here and then CH3 okay so just to write that out so it's a little cleaner uh, I will do that down here and by the way uh, just as I'm at a transition moment here head on over to chemcomplete.com and check out all of our available resources to help you pass your organic chemistry course We've got a guide on what you need in order to pass organic chemistry. There's also guides that I've written on uh, unknowns with spectroscopy. So NMR, IR, mass spec, if you're struggling with stuff like that, we have guides on that. We have guides on aromaticity, what makes something aromatic, practicing Huckel's rule. 
Okay, so if you're in first or second semester organic chemistry, I would strongly encourage you to check that out. The guides are very affordable. It's a way to support the channel. Okay, and then obviously subscribing here is uh, fantastic as well. So always hit the subscribe button to stay up to date. All right, so what we would have, let's do a different one, okay, but it's kind of recapping the same thing without walking through all the steps here. So this time, let's go ahead, we'll just use methyl amine, okay, but very similar, H+. Plus. And so what I would end up with is this compound right here. It would be the nitrogen, right, it would have the methyl group. And then I'd have the other methyl group here. Okay, and this is an imine. Okay, imine formation. So imines are going to be the result of a primary amine. And when I'm saying amine, you don't want to confuse that with imine. Okay, amine is a type of functional group. Right? Amine is just R. NH2 if it's a primary one. And then if it's secondary, it would be R and another R group, NH, and you could also have a tertiary one. Okay, so a primary amine in acidic conditions, again, around pH 4 to pH 5, uh, 4 to 5, is going to give you the imine as the final result. All right, so that is it. That covers imine reactions. And on the channel next time, we are going to take a look at inamine reactions, which are very similar. So if you've seen this and you understand this, you'll probably understand inamines just as well. But the key there will be that we're using secondary amines instead of primary amines. And that will give a different result as far as the process we go through. But these two reactions are kind of coupled and taught together. So anyway, that's it. One more shout out to chemcomplete.com. Subscribe to stay up to date. You leave comments and I'll try to get back to you. And other than that, leave a like on the video if it helped. And I will see you guys in the next lecture. Thanks for learning with me.